Testing one two three four is that on? Is it on? Can you hear me? All righty then. <laughs> Let's get her done. <laughs> All right. It was the uh, near death diet. I was. <laughs> I'm not going on that again. I retired from dieting. Oh man. Still kind of jacked up in here. Weird. All right. Hey, welcome to the Deliverance Center tonight. Yeah, the devil's in trouble. Amen. In trouble tonight. <clears throat> YouTubers, love you. Thanks for showing up. We're ready to go. October 26th, Familiar Spirits. It's Halloween time. These are the spirits that take over the planet when the Antichrist pops up. Okay? There's our uh, new website. I need to take that down. It's not new anymore. I'm still on the radio all the time. There I am. And uh, you can catch the radio programs anytime you want to off the website on Omni FM, should you be interested. Uh, my uh, listeners went up to 1,200 last week. I was down to 300 during my uh, sickness. I was down from, uh, I had 3,200. Before I got sick, then it kind of tanked. But we're working our way back. Uh, tomorrow is the uh, healing rooms here, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. What? Oh, 10 to 2. Okay, I apologize for that. I got the wrong times on there. It's from 10 to 2 tomorrow here. We'll be down here uh, praying for you. You just come in the foyer and uh, Lori will see you there, fill out the forms, and then uh, someone will come pray with you individually and be ready to go. We are changing that soon. In January, we're moving it from Saturdays to Thursday nights. We're going to change our Thursday night services to the healing room. And uh, as an experiment, we'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, if you buy stuff on Amazon, you go to Smile Amazon and put in our name, and they will pay us 1.2% of whatever you buy. They'll give us the money. It doesn't cost you anything. Thanks for your help. Same thing with Good Search, switching over from Google. They'll pay us to use it. Tonight's teaching is on YouTube channel number two, House of Healing AZ. You can get the miracle list off the website. You can go through self-deliverance at home. You don't need to come down here if you're out of state. YouTubers, remember your jobs open up a terror cell in your church. Our uh, healing center here does not conflict with churches. We're not a church, and we're not competing with churches. We're, we're an addition to other churches. We only have services Thursday and Fridays. Most churches don't have services then. So when you go back to your church, I hope you do. Open up a, a terror cell in that church to start terrorizing the devil by picking off the sick people. I did it in Scottsdale years ago and worked fantastic. I used to go to the Dream Center out there years ago. It was I had more people I knew what to do with. As soon as uh, the word of mouth gets around, they start lining up to get healed. Try it. Open one in your church. You only need two or three, according to the Bible. All right. Here's something else you'll be extremely enthused about. <laughs> These donation boxes are on the doors there, and they're all hermetically sealed. You're not leaving until you donate in that box. Or you can donate on the website. Thank you. I'll see you in Tucson next month at the Tucson City Center for a deliverance service at 10 o'clock. I'll see you in Flagstaff the week after that, next month, at the Oasis of Hope. And uh, we'll be there for a deliverance service and staff training. They want to uh, get into the deliverance area, so they, need, they wanted us to come up there and help them and train them, be happy to do it. There's no charge for any of these seminars or anything. We're always ready to go. We're usually ready to go. All right. 
Christianity sucks in the United States. <laughs> and the reason it sucks is because of adversity. Adversity. Okay? Uh, in the first century, the Christians were trained in a, in a completely different system than we're trained in. Uh, we've got it soft here. Incredibly soft here in America. And America's a, a gutless country. Uh, and all affluent countries have weak Christianity. All countries that are affluent have Christianity that's very weak. Where there's oppression and adversity, Christianity is very powerful. For example, China. The underground church in China is super powered. And that's because the government hates Christianity. They're trying to stomp it out. Here in America, Christianity is a cakewalk. It's just something to do. It's more like a hobby. And there's not much to it. Okay? But even in a group like this, there would be a few people that would want to become a disciple and not just be a Christian anymore. And the few people that I'm going to talk to tonight is you. You'd like to leave being a Christian because here in America, being a Christian doesn't amount to much. It's boring, and you don't get to see the moving of the Spirit often. People backslide all the time. It just really stinks here. But I want to show you something about faith and Christianity and how you can fix this. It's not easy to fix, but it is fixable if you'll learn how to fight a little bit. Just a little bit sometimes brings miracles. Now, does God answer prayers in America? Absolutely, of course. You've had millions of prayers answered or thousands or maybe two or three, but anyway, you've had some answered. And God's been good to you in some areas. That's great. I'm talking about becoming a disciple. All Christians have... God answer prayers here and there. Even the crappy Christians. God answers some of their prayers. I'm not talking about being a Christian. I'm talking about taking that next step, going to that next level, becoming that next person for God, and going to on to being a disciple, not just a Christian that gets some prayers answered once in a while. How'd that sound? How's that introduction? Oh, that was interesting. Well, let's check it out. Uh, in England, you've heard of this guy, the legendary British evangelist Smith Wigglesworth, made a statement one time that lives to this day. Check this out. He said, great faith is the product of great fights. He said, great testimonies come out of great tests. Wigglesworth wasn't a Christian. He was a hardcore disciple. He didn't know anything about Christianity. This guy was a hardcore disciple of Christ. Great triumphs can only come out of great trials. That's quite a, quite a statement there. That's why I stole it from him. It's in the Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 6. The great apostle Paul. This guy was the killer of all killers. He told Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. Great faith requires a Christian to fight. You have to develop the capacity to fight. You'd be surprised how many Christians won't even fight for their own family members. Kids jacked up on drugs and sex and porn. Kids loaded with disabilities and congenital disabilities and all kinds of stuff. And you'd be shocked to know that the parents will not even fight for their own kids spiritually. You'd be shocked to know how often that happens. Then he said, Epi Lamanomai, grab and hold hard. That's what he meant. Lay hold on it. Grab it. Get nasty. 
That's what he's saying. I'm paraphrasing for Paul. On what? Eternal life. Dude, why? Because under rare circumstances, you can lose your eternal life, and that's a different Bible study we won't go into tonight. Paul was not one of these kooky Baptists who said you can't lose your salvation. He wasn't that stupid. Far from it. He says where you are called and you profess a good profession. Homologia means something you confess to others. A statement you make of faith to others. In a way similar to water baptism. It's a statement you're making. It's symbolic of you leaving your old life, dunk, and you rising to your new life in Christ. And Paul said, listen, you've been called by God, Timothy, not to be a casual Christian, but a disciple who can fight. You got to go to the gym. You got to learn how to fight. You can't learn how to fight going to Sunday school classes at a church. That's just for casual Christians. They're trying to keep them from backsliding. Let's give them something to keep them from backsliding this week. Brother Bob. Okay, Sister Sally. Let's try to encourage them. Send them over to Hillsong for a great song. Let's bring them back here and we'll try and keep them from backsliding. No, no, no. I'm not talking about Hillsong and church and all that crap. I'm talking about becoming a disciple and learning how to fight back. That's, as Grandpa said, a horse of a different color. Let's check it out. Paul's the expert. You've been called by God to fight because great victories come from great trials. Great testimonies come out of great challenges. You're not going to overcome a whole lot of stuff sitting in Sunday school class. Not a whole lot of fights there. No, at least in some churches. Abraham had to fight for his faith, and God is calling you to fight. Check it out. It's right here. Genesis 22. It came to pass that God, Nasa, tested Abraham. He said, Abraham, hey. And he said, Lord, I'm here. He said, take your son, Isaac, whom you love. Oh, man. Jehovah's got something on his mind here. This was an unusual statement for him to make. A bold statement. It was aggressive. He told him, take your son, whom you love. He didn't need to throw that in. But that's what was bothering Jehovah. He had a pebble in his shoe. You ever had a pebble in your shoe? It's not killing you. It's not like cancer. But you're going, geez, you know, God, you... Hold on a minute, Bill. You get down and you take the... Jehovah had a little pebble in his shoe. Something was, something was eaten at his craw. Yeah, he'd been watching Abraham. He'd been watching Isaac. And that relationship started to bother him. I'm talking to mothers now. That relationship started to bother him. Because there was too much love there. Uh-oh, I stepped in it there, didn't I? Okay, shake that off. Uh-oh. He looked at it, he said, hey, go to Moriah. I'll tell you where to go. Take the boy. And the one you love. Take him. And offer him as a burnt offering. What? You got to be kidding You got to be kidding, kidding is a phrase that white people who don't read use. <laughs> that was a personal joke. See, that wasn't for you. That was something I laugh at. Burn offering, what is that? That's when the offering is consumed 100%. It's burnt to the ground. See? Similar to that hurricane that hit those poor people in Florida. My God. There was a town there, and then the, now there's no town there. Unbelievable. Mother Nature, Mother Nature in bad mood in Florida. She's usually in a good mood here. Usually in a good mood here. <clears throat> now look, 
Ola is the Hebrew word and it means to be completely consumed and there were different burnt offerings and here's a list of them if you're interested uh, YouTubers Jehovah and Moses instituted several of them thought I'd list them there but anyway back to Abraham he says they get to Mount Moriah and Isaac's going hey this this isn't like a normal burnt offering here because you don't set up an altar you don't bring the equipment without bringing a, the offering with it. Where, where's the goat? Where's the lamb? Where's this? Where's that? So Isaac, as a kid, already knows all this stuff because Abraham and Isaac are like that. I mean, they're tight. Okay. And they are around each other 24-7. Jehovah was watching that. He was watching that. Something was bothering him about that relationship. And he goes, we don't have a burnt offering. And he said, Abraham goes, God will provide the sacrifice. Now what's going on here? Abraham is having a fight for his faith. That was a long trip. Okay? And when Jehovah told him to take him up there and offer him as a burnt offering, that thing sunk into his soul like a truckload of bad news. As you can imagine. You got to go up somewhere and kill your son, whom you love more than any other person in the world, including Sarah. And then you got to think about it while you're walking, pulling a donkey for days. Oh, that was a tough, tough three days. Oh, that was very difficult to do. What's he doing there? What you're going to have to do someday, if you want to go to the next level, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to put in some determined effort for your faith to see a miracle from God. Most Christians don't, won't do that. Abraham wasn't like American Christians. He loaded that donkey. He packed up. He left. He never stopped. He was focused. They came to the place God told him. They put the wood in order and so on. And you know what happened, right? He picks up the knife. Brings it down to kill his son. Amazing. Well, that was killing him to do that. I mean, you can... I'm sure his attitude wasn't. Abraham. Yes, Lord. I want you to take your son... And offer him as a burnt offering. I want you to burn him completely up. I'll tell you where to do it. I'm positive the reaction wasn't, really? Great. Good Lord, come on. Give me some, give me some skin. That's fantastic. You know what, Lord? I was just thinking about that yesterday. I, you're reading my mind. I can't wait to burn the kid up. Oh, quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. He had to fight off the devil three days on that trip. You know he got hit. Every other minute, thinking, "Hey, you're, you're gonna, your boy's gonna die. You've got the sacrifice. What are you talking?" The devil came to him. The devil will do anything he can. He'll send demons to talk you out of fighting for your faith because he knows if he can, you won't get your miracle from God. He took that knife and started to slay him, and then suddenly Jehovah said, "Whoa! Hold the phone! Bang! Don't!" Touch that kid. Then he said something unbelievable. Shocking. Now I know. What? Oh, that don't make any sense. That's got to be a misprint. No, it's not a misprint, friend. God has omniscient knowledge that we don't have, but he also has practical knowledge that we have. And experience. God knows stuff because he's omniscient, but he doesn't know stuff in practice because it hadn't happened yet. See, that's your problem. 
God knows you, but he doesn't know you. You know why? Great victories come from great trials. Great testimonies come out of great challenges and great fights. Abraham fought for his faith. And guess what? Jehovah said the same thing he's going to say to you. Now I know. See, in the spirit world, talk is cheap. I want to do this. I want to do that for God. Oh, I'll do that. Oh, I wouldn't do that. That's, I wouldn't do that sin. Oh, I would never do that. Talk is cheap. God doesn't know whether you do it. Or not by experience. And omniscient knowledge is not good enough. Ah, you're not listening to me. God knowing something isn't going to do you any good. He's got to know it. I'm not wording it right. Help me. Grandpa once said, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. See, 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 he had that pudding before. He knew it tasted good before, but that's a new bowl of pudding. Oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. That information is useless to God until He sees you do it. Then He knows it. He won't know it until you fight for your faith and win. What happened to Abraham? He passed his fight. Guess what happens in, the, in eternity? Israel is completely restored for all eternity. We get to see it living in the new Jerusalem. King David gets his kingdom back. Why? Somebody took their son three days and listened to the devil all three days telling him Negative things, saying negative things to him. But Abraham said, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. I'm not going to be like an American Christian and peter out and fall apart. No, no way. Not going to happen. If you, pass, you fight for your faith, God will then know. You're in line for miracles. Paralyticus, what does that mean in Greek? Spinal cord injuries. Luke chapter 5, check this out. A bunch of guys brought their disabled relative to Jesus at a prayer meeting. Couldn't get in. So they said, you know what? He'll probably be here tomorrow. Let's just go home and watch Hannity. No, no, wait a minute. Huh? No, you, great. Great victories come from great adversity. We can't get in this way. We can't get in that way. We can't. Oh, I got an idea. We're not going home. We're going up on the roof. Oh, there's no, there's no opening up here. What the heck's going on? Oh, let's make an opening. See, a Christian goes home early. Disciples tear up the tile. They tore the tile up and they put their small cloaks and everything on the side of that cot. They lowered him down there. That's disrupting a prayer meeting. You get thrown out of a mega church for tearing up the tile in the room. They couldn't go there, so they brought him around the roof and they brought him in. Dropped him down on the couch and guess what happened? What were they doing there? 
They're doing what God's telling you you got to do. You got to overcome some adversity. All the adversity in the world? Of course not. God never gives you more than he knows you can handle. You learn it in increments. You grow by grace. You grow by faith. God's not going to ask you to win the world overnight. Of course he isn't. But he's going to ask you to fight through this thing here, then that thing, then that thing. If you don't wipe that yellow streak off your back, you're going to be a Christian the rest of your life and miss your destiny. Because you've been called by God to fight. That's what Paul said. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm What is that? Oh, hemorrhaging. Mark chapter 5. As Jesus was going with Brother Jarius to his house to pray for his daughter, he was being mobbed by people, it says, Mark chapter 5. And there was a certain woman who was hemorrhaging. She had probably cervix cancer or something for 12 years. And it says she had gone to every doctor in town. She spent all of her money on medical treatment and her condition got worse. Mark chapter 5, when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press. Oculus is a Greek word for a mob. And she came in behind him. Okay? I mean, she missed him. She said, if I just touch his garment, I'll be home. What was she doing there? Her faith brought her down to the street, but she couldn't get through. Her faith had to be fought for. See? Some prayers once in a while are just answered like that. Boop! There you go. Bless you. And you're happy about it. Oh, then the devil comes along and says, oh, all your prayers are going to act. It's a cakewalk for you, honey. You got it in the bag, fool. To become a disciple, your prayers aren't going to get answered like that. You're going to have to fight your way in. She had to fight her way in. She had to fight through the crowd. Then she missed him. So he had passed her. So she had to fight to get to the tassel. Bleeding all the way. Oh, you don't go out when you're bleeding. Uh-uh. No. She had to overcome that before she left the house. She had to overcome the relatives. Girl, what you doing? You going out of the house looking like that? Yes, I am. I'm, I heard about Jesus of Nazareth. He's downtown. I got to make my move now or forever hold my peace in my grave. Lord, please heal me now. He didn't heal her there. Why? Sometimes you're not going to get your prayer answered just like that. Honey, you're going to have to fight for your miracle from God. She fought and pushed her way in. And guess what happened? It says it's stanched. Yes, sir. -y. There's nothing wrong with a good stanchion. I'll tell you that. Yes, sir. The strumpet. What is a strumpet? Well, it's Latin for, a, you know, some whore. Let's check out whores here. It's whore night at the Deliverance Center. Luke chapter 7, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to come over to his house to have dinner with him. Jesus went over and sat down to have dinner. Great. Behold, a woman in the city, a sinner, knew Jesus was there. And she knew he was eating. Oh, boy. That's going to take some guts. You're going to have to fight for this miracle. First of all, nobody wants you around anyway. Some of you can relate. I've met some of you, and you can really relate. Not too many people want you around. Well, they didn't want her around because in that society, unlike ours, prostitutes are kind of glamorized now. Back then, they were trash. And they were not socialized. Anybody who socialized with a prostitute back then, you were trash. See? You were known by whom you associated. And that was the first big thing, to get out of the house. Shaken. Then she had to go to Simon's house. Pharisee. What? Wow. They wouldn't let a whore near a synagogue. That was a second war. Then she had to walk down there. Uber was busy. 
Then she had to interrupt God while he was eating. Oh, that that's a person ready to fight. That's not a Christian there. That's a, that's somebody desperate for a miracle from God. Excuse me. That's somebody ready for a miracle. Not some casual Christian running around. Far from it. Then she carts down there her livelihood. See? The more expensive Johns got the fancy fragrances from, from Egypt and Ethiopia. Oh, yeah, they kept them in an alabaster box. And she brought that alabaster box down there, which was the most expensive and valuable thing she had. It was the hub of her earnings capacity, so to speak. She walked in the door. Can you imagine walking in the door of his house? Jeez, that took more guts than Samson facing the Philistines. Far more. She walked in there and everybody looked at her. They were all looking at her. Oh, yeah. Some of them were dropping their heads. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, she's... No, I don't know her. Oh. Oh, you were over there Tuesday? Oh, shit. Oh, Wednesday. Wednesday for me. Oh. Okay. That was an embarrassing afternoon. For her. For them. Everybody humiliated. Everybody looking at her like, oh, you piece of crap. Well, that takes some guts. Christians here in America, you look at them wrong and they get offended. Are you kidding me? Hey, pastor, I had a great idea for ministry. Oh, we've got somebody that's covering that. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, you ever met an American Christian? Holy smell, they'll, they'll collapse like a, I mean, at the drop of a hat, they're down. Usher's counting over them. One, <laughs> two, three, put the pass gas, four, they cry, five. Oh, this woman was far from it. This was a woman who wouldn't be denied a miracle from God. The Holy Ghost put this story in here. To save our souls. He was showing us. What has to be done. She breaks that alabaster box. <coughs> what was she saying? Hey. I'm not using this anymore. I'm getting forgiven. I'm getting delivered. I don't need. Pour myself out anymore. I'm getting a new life. Okay. She wasn't a. It wasn't a casual Billy Graham thing. Stand up, come as you are, fill out this card, say that prayer. No, far from it. Oh, no. You know, casual converts make casual backsliders. She goes into the room there. Shock sweeps through the room. Then she walks up behind him while he's eating. You don't disturb the Messiah while he's eating. And she goes behind him. He's laying down, stomach first, on his elbows there, and his feet are back here. Simon never even bothered to give him the common decency of washing his feet, as they would a normal person that came there to eat, let alone God. Never even washed his feet for him. The Holy Ghost said, Simon's too stupid to wash your feet. I got somebody else coming in to wash them. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't give her any water or a pail to wash his feet in. Oh, not, not going to happen. She didn't need it. She wasn't a Christian. She was looking for a miracle from God. Yeah, she, she was broken. Broken people get miracles from God like they fall off a tree. Proud people, religious people, they don't get nothing. They go home and file a complaint about the preacher. God, Brother Mike, he's no preacher. I'm not a preacher. I told you that. I'm a counselor. If I'm screwing up here, hey, I, I warned you. She's wiping her, his feet. They didn't give her a towel. They didn't give her any water. She didn't need it. Mm. 
when you got a broken heart, you don't need a bunch of church crap. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. And she's kissing his feet. Oh my gosh. The comfort level in that room went from here to here when she walked in. Now it's under the floor. She's kissing God's feet in front of everybody, including some of her Johns. Probably Simon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's probably Catholic. And she anointed them with the alabaster box. She broke. I'm not going to need this anymore. Boom! I'm getting healed. Yes. I'll just pour it all on him. Yes. Now that's, that's how you get a miracle from God. Was it handed to her a silver platter? Oh, far from it. You got to fight sometimes for your miracle. God will answer this prayer once in a while. Oh, I just prayed a simple prayer. It happened. It happens. We're, and it happens to all of us. We're all grateful too. Man, I'm grateful for easy prayer answers. Love them. To become a disciple? Nah. No. Great victories require great trials. According to Wigglesworth. He would know. Jesus said to the woman, this was interesting, a gune is a wife. That is really interesting to me. <laughs> your faith has sozo delivered you from your life of embarrassment, humiliation, and misery. Was it a quick prayer at home? Lord, please forgive me. Oh, far from it. She had to fight. For that miracle and American Christians won't do it those who want to become disciples and there's a few here tonight I'm talking to you you will fight you will do it oh boy here's these guys again yes sir these guys should have been on a sitcom yes sir Luke 17, Jesus entered into a village and he met 10 lepers standing way over there. Wow, well, yeah. If you came into town and you were a leper, what happened to you? That's called stoning. See the drama there? It's baseball playoffs. I thought I would add that tie-in. <laughs> like I said, I'm not a preacher. That ain't working. The ten lepers are way over there for obvious reasons, and they yell at him. They're yelling at him. Hey! God, we're dying. Help us, please. Master, have mercy on us. Oh, man. Mercy, that's, that's a word, Jesus. That gets him when he hears that word, mercy. <laughs> that kind of gets a hook in him. He yells at him, saying, listen, go show yourselves to the priest like Moses told you. And then they said, okay, we will. None of them were healed. Not one of them healed. Then as they turned and obeyed, as they went, they were healed. See, your prayer life sucks. Here's why. You pray, and then you sit there and do nothing waiting for something to fall in through the roof. Dude. Those guys came into town risking their lives looking for Jesus. Great, great victories require great fights. They got what they want because they obeyed. As says, as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, see, when you're looking for disciples, if there's any ministers listening to me, you're always looking for the minority in the group. Always. No matter what size the group is, doesn't matter. It's always a minority 
that want to be disciples. Always. Check it. One guy wanted more from God than just to be cleansed of leprosy, of his disability. One of the ten. One of them. That would be one-tenth. I see the jealousy on your faces. When he saw he was healed, he's walking toward the priest. He looks down at his hands and arms. You go, my God! Scab falls off. A finger grows back. This eye, seeing out of that again. A scab falls off his forehead. Uh, what? Come on. Come on. Man, wouldn't have been great if Obamacare could do, do that? <laughs> he saw he was healed. One of the guys, the other ten also saw they were healed. But one of the ten wanted more from God than just to be healed. He comes back with a loud voice. Can't get too loud in church. But when you're a dying leper and you got healed, you get as loud as you feel like. And he does what? This is a second story involving Jesus' feet. Oh, I wanted that one to land. This is a second story involving Jesus' feet. I think there's a message there. I'll let you figure it out. Giving thanks. And he was like that Simon whore, a rejected person. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the Bible says if you're a rejected person, you're in a better spot than somebody if everybody likes you. In God's eyes. He chooses rejected people first. Over the ones everybody likes. Okay. Jesus said, said the same thing to him. He said to the prostitute, you've been delivered. Amen. See, one guy out of the ten wanted to be healed and delivered. Only nine of them only wanted to be healed. You wouldn't believe how many times that has happened to me in my counseling practice. People have come to me hundreds of times and just said, well, here's what's wrong with me. I got a bad back. I just want to be healed. Tomorrow at the healing room, it will happen to my staff. People will come in that door. They'll say, I just want to be healed. And they've been, uh, and the people that come in here tomorrow, many of them have already been shopping around to faith healers and pastors and ministers. And they've had 50 people pray for them. See? But we don't fall for that. See? We know they've been prayed for 50 times. Their back's not healed. There's something blocking that healing. And if you don't find out what's blocking the healing, then they're going to leave here with a bad back. And we don't want that. Something blocking that healing. And somebody on my staff is going to ask them a few questions, personal ones, and find out what that is. Here's another one. Desperation. This is a good one, right? Matthew 15, a woman from Syria, she comes and she runs down the crew. They're traveling all the time, the disciples and a bunch of other disciples. It was a crowd, pretty big crowd. Jesus had a lot of people. Some of them were hangers-on, some of them were disciples. Just like church, you get one guy who's a disciple and you get a bunch of hangers-on. He had the same thing. She shows up, there's a bunch of hangers on, a bunch of disciples there. So she goes, hey, I can't get close to him, so what am I going to do? Well, let me think about this for a second. Mm, I guess, you know what, I guess it just wasn't God's will for me to get my prayer answered. I guess I'll just go home and, it, oh no, oh no, 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 no. No, listen up, Christians. People who are desperate for miracles from God, 
they don't just show up and take no for an answer. Right. Right. Christians do. They take a no for an answer and then they get offended. I can't believe that. Well, that's outrageous. God. Crowgazo means that she was yelling and then yelled louder repetitively. She's yelling like crazy, driving everybody nuts. You know how that is with your relative. They start yelling in your house. You go, gosh, I wish I could get rid of these relatives. Have mercy on me, Lord. Eliao is the Greek word. It means to have compassion on somebody. That is the most incredible capacity God has, isn't it? Love breeds compassion. You can't have one without the other. It's impossible. I love you. You're lying. I know you're lying. Compassion always follows true love. Once you ask God to have compassion on you, and you truly mean it, oh, the Holy Ghost stops everything he's doing, comes right over to see you. And passes over all these other Christians. Not interested in those. My Thugater, that's a young daughter. So like a grade schooler. My young daughter is daimonizomai, demonized, being tortured by demons. And Jesus said, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to teach Brother Mike in the Deliverance Center a lesson with this story and everybody else on the planet, I'm not even going to answer her here. I'm going to string this thing out a little bit. What am I going to teach here? Well, tremendous victories always come from tremendous trials. Great, great faith is developed through great challenges. He didn't even answer her. Well, you think he what, what was he rude? Oh no, no. He was doing us a favor right here, fixing the story up just perfect. Never said a word to her. And then more adversity comes at her. She not only had to travel, God only knows how far she came down to Jerusalem from Syria. I mean, that was a hike, day journey. But she says to him. She says to him, Lord, help me. Me? No, it was her daughter. But, listen carefully. When you truly love somebody and they're suffering, it's like you're suffering. Yes, that's right. She said, have mercy on, have compassion on me. It wasn't her. It was her daughter. But it was the same as if it was her. See, her daughter couldn't fight for herself. She didn't understand that great victories come from great fights. She's too sick. Mother earned it. Mother understood it. Mother got it. Mother loved her. And when her daughter was tormented, she was tormented. Then more adversity hits her. <clears throat> the devil goes, this will get rid of her. I'll turn the church people on her. Yeah, we get the church people shagging her. Hey, Lord, send this babbling broad away. She's crazy. She's yelling at us. You know, hey, Lord, kind of getting a little sick of it. It's annoying. Thank you, Dan. So Jesus says, well, I'm going to teach Brother Mike something else 2,000 years from now. Listen, I am not sent to Gentiles. I'm the Jewish Messiah. And Jesus starts using animal illustrations. It happens. He says, the lost sheep. What are sheep? They're box of rocks, dumb. You ever seen a sheep? 
They even look stupid. <laughs> they follow over here and there. They're idiots. The idiots of the house of Israel, the sheep. I've been sent to them to save them. Woman. And guess what happens? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Incredible victories come from incredible trials. She doesn't even take no from him. Now that's love. Wow. That's called intercession there. She wrote the book on it. She wasn't even Jewish. She said, Lord, help me. She knew Jesus had a weak spot. The disciples didn't. Their hearts were hard, and they couldn't care less about that woman. That's a typical church person. They'll help you a little bit, but then they'll, you get the boot. Oh, no. She had him. See, you can get him too. He's got a soft spot. You got a soft spot in there somewhere. Hard area. Broken person, desperate person, begging, asking for compassion. <gasps> That's his soft spot. You got him. He uses another animal illustration. He says, hey, listen. It's not proper for me to take deliverance, which is the children's bread, Jews, Christians. See, deliverance isn't for sinners. It never was. The devil said it was. Oh, that's just for sinners. Oh, they're all demon-possessed. Don't worry about it. No. Deliverance was always for God's people. He said, yes, listen, I can't throw Balo it to the Kunarian puppies. He's using sheep for Jews and puppies for Gentiles. <laughs> this is a great story. It makes me laugh. She says, that's true, Lord, but even the puppies, even the puppies eat crumbs that fall from their master's table. Wow, this story over. Great deliverances. Great deliverances come from great battles. You have no idea how many times, hundreds. Brother Mike, I've got this and that. Can you cast this demon on me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa, dude, hold on a second. Now, how'd that thing get in there? What are you doing to keep him in there? I don't want to answer any questions. I just want somebody to cast this demon on it. <laughs> Listen. Listen. If you get a breakthrough and a bunch of spirits come out of you, hey, you got to fight till they're all gone. You can't just start coasting. Right? This isn't dancing with the stars. <laughs> Stupid. You have no idea how many people have started deliverances around here, hundreds, and quit. Why? Too much work. <laughs> they didn't think anything of it. While they were collecting all the spirits. Right. Hours on porn. Right. Drunk for months and years. Right. No problemo. Can you cast all the demons out of me? Boop. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You were an alcoholic for 15 years. You've been on porn for 20 years. You want to just come in here? You don't want to do anything? You just want to get... Really? Dude. Great deliverances come from great battles, Amen. great fights, great challenges, great determination, great desperation. Yes. Yes. 
One guy yelled at me one time. I don't understand why I have to work this hard. Listen, dude. I use that word dude. It's Latin. Um, <laughs> well, I can't remember their names. But that's okay. That doesn't matter. It's a story that counts. I said, dude, you're, you're going through this process and you're having to fight for your life and fight for your soul because God's preparing you for your ministry so you can fight for others. Well, I don't want to fight for anybody right now. No, you don't want to fight for anybody right now, but as God molds you and makes you down the road, you get an attitude adjustment and you become a warrior. Yes. Yes. Oh, she says, I'll take the crumbs. You're not taking the crumbs, honey. You're taking a complete deliverance for your daughter. Yes. Why? Because you fought for your faith yes. and you persevered and you didn't give up. That's what Wigglesworth said. Great testimonies come from great battles. How did she get it? The way she wanted it. There you go. That's, that's a Bible study in itself there. It's a good sermon there. Oh, this guy was fantastic. Some blind guy sitting on the curb. Mark chapter 10. When blind Bartimaeus heard Jesus was coming down the street, he took a number and waited in line. And then, he <laughs> oh wait a minute, that's one of, some of the other Bibles they put out now where they adjust all the stories. That's a new American English version. Stupid Bibles. Have you ever seen all this crap? It's scary. Frightening. Most of these Bibles, I wouldn't use the white... I wouldn't, <clears throat> I wouldn't burn. Where am I? I'm getting lost right now. Get back to this. He says, well, let's see, I'm blind. Nobody gives a rat's fanny about me. I'm all alone. There's a crowd here. I got some challenges here today. I got to face it today. What am I going to do about it? Let me think about my options here. Mm -hmm. I got one option. Yeah! <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you're desperate for a miracle from God, you only need one option. You'll use it. He starts yelling. And guess what? Bang! Hit the soft spot right out of the gate. He said, Lord, have compassion. Eliyahu, have compassion. Lord, if you get a minute, would you help me? Or you won't? Okay, I'll go back to my cup. Sit on my curb. No. No. That's a Christian. Blind Bartimaeus wasn't an American Christian. He was, he was a fighter. What did he do? Uh-oh. <laughs> it's going to happen to you, friend. Hey, will you get out of your chair and determine in your mind, I'm going to fight back. The devil will see you get up. The demons are watching you. And they'll say, hey, they're out of their chair. They're off their fat fanny. They're, they, they, they're out of their comfort zone here. We got a red flag here. There's danger zone here. This loser, we had him in the bag, but now they got out of their chair. So let's put them back in the bag. How do we do that? Oh, they're very sensitive to the opinions of others. People come along and criticize them. And they, oh, they just shrink into a shell. Let's send them some people to yell at them. I got a couple of relatives I know that'll do it. <laughs> Oh, blind Bartimaeus started screaming for help, and the devil said, Whoa, we got to drown him out. So we're going to send a bunch of other yellers to him. Can't you see it? Epitomato is a Greek word used to describe, it's almost, almost exclusively used to rebuke demons. They were rebuking him as if he was a demon. 
Yeah. It's happened to you before. At work, at home. Yeah, it happens. Hey, why don't you shut up? Hold your peace in King James language is shut up. And when they told him to shut up, what was that? What did he do there? Oh, see, great victories come out of great challenges. The people have turned on him. And he yells louder. Oh, no, he's not going to fit in your church too well. He would have to be escorted out by the ushers. Then he hits Jesus right in the soft spot again. He got him. You can use this pattern and get him too. Lord, have Eliyahu, have compassion on me. But you notice, it's not the prayer that matters to God. I don't think God cares that much about prayers. It's how you pray, not what you say. You can say exactly the same prayer casually and get nothing. Or like this guy says them and get everything from God. Saying the same thing. Why do you think all that stuff at church doesn't work? Going to the Catholic Church, Lutheran Church, Orthodox Church. You sit there, you got your little hymnal there, got your got your printout. So then you, oh, it's time to time to read the prayer. They read a prayer. <laughs> what are you nuts? Reading a prayer? God's not going to answer some prayer you're reading. He answers people who pray from the guts. Amen. That prayer. Is answered every time. God have mercy on me. Oh, Jesus is in trouble now. You hear some guy yelling at him down the street. And guess what he does? That's what the Holy Ghost does every single time. Hey, you think he's the only blind man on that street that day? The other blind men were told to shut up by the church people in the crowd. And they did. Then they went home with their cup. Blind. One guy said, I ain't doing that. So you got to make a determination what you're doing with your life. You're going to continue to waste it with the cares of this life or are you going to make that turn? God's still sitting there waiting for you. Oh, I'm too old to do it now. That's horse pucky. You still got a call on your life. It's modified a bit. True. You're older now. That call's still there. Well, he turns around. He says, hey, bring that guy up here. Yeah. As soon as you get a call from God, all of a sudden, all them people yelling at you. They want to be your friend. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I'll take, I'll take the, uh, the smash ticket. Okay. Oh, my God, I just want a bunch of money. Oh, you want a bunch of money? You got all kinds of friends. Yes, Until yep. the money runs out. Yep. <laughs> then you're back to garbage. Yep. Trash. Bankruptcy. Hey, be of good comfort. Hey, dude, he's calling you. <laughs> they didn't know his name either. Mark chapter 10, he stands up off the curb there, throws his garment off there, left his pottery cup lay there. <laughs> Why did he do that? <clears throat> well, it didn't happen in every case, but the synagogues occasionally would give blind people pottery cups so they could get uh, donations, free will donations from people. And then they'd give them a special little cloak to wear that said, hey, I'm blind. Or I'm disabled or something. Hey, so that the people in the crowds would look over and say, oh, there's a disabled guy. He's wearing that outfit. As soon as blind Bartimaeus got that wave, hey, come down here. God's calling you. He stood up and said, I'm not going to need this anymore. I don't need that cup anymore. Give that thing to somebody else who can't see.
Guess what happened to him? You know the story. He went home healed. How come? Great miracles come from great battles. The other stuff you pray for, Lord, can you help me with the hangnail? Yeah, I will. Healed. Well, oh, you got a hangnail healed. That's great. You go give a testimony at church. Nobody cares about your hangnail. A lot of them are jealous because their hangnails suck and they were digging into theirs. They didn't have any faith in bleeding. So now they don't like you. Because you got your prayers answered. You think I'm joking? Spiritual jealousy is a very common thing in church. You think that's a joke? That ain't a joke. Peter. Whoa, Peter. Oh, this guy's fantastic. I love him. Matthew 14. Storm. Jesus running on the water. There he is. He's standing out on the water. Unbelievable. The disciples are in the boat. They're scared. Shootless. <laughs> Peter says to the Lord, Lord, give me a call. I want to come out and see you. He saw him on the water. See? Peter was very much like kids that go to uh, amusement parks. Some kids pass up all the other rides for the depth charge death killer. You ever seen those? Peter was like that kid. He didn't want to ride the uh, jumbo elephants. He didn't want to sit in there and go around like that. He wanted to go through the life or death thing. So he yells out, hey, I want to walk out there. You know, it's not recorded there, but he did ask him. He wanted to moonwalk part of the way. He was, he was gonna... And Jesus said, come on. See, when you step out on your faith, you're not going to get a long lecture from God because he might lose you. He just grabs you right there and says, come. Go for it. Come on. Peter, unbelievable. The other 11 disciples are in the corner of the ship, shaking in their sandals. They're freaking out. They're looking at Peter like, I told you. I, to I knew. Have you ever had a relative that had ADHD? And you told all your other relatives, someday he's going to kill himself. Peter had ADD running wild. And they said, I told you, I knew it. Peter was, I knew he was going to eventually do it. Yeah. I knew it. Stay here till he drowns. Jesus will get in the boat and we'll go back to fishing. <laughs> They're not about to get out of the boat. Peter actually steps down out of the boat. He puts his sandal down. Bang! He's walking on the water. Incredible. And he's walking to Jesus. He's doing everything right. You can start out doing everything right. And the devil will still come for you. He'll still try to weasel his way in and get you off your game. He gets Peter off his game. Peter's doing everything right. Lord, can I come to you? God says come. You got... The authority, you got the okay from God, you prayed about it, do it. He's doing it. He's walking on the water. There he goes. Then, uh-oh. Then he's looking around. And he sees, you gots to be kidding. <laughs> he goes, wait a minute. He starts to overthink spiritual things. See? Really intelligent people almost never get healed or ever get delivered. You know why? They overthink spiritual things. They think too much. And they nitpick spiritual things too much. Jesus circumvented that quickly with Peter. Lord, let me come to you. Come! He didn't have time to think. See, had Peter had time to think, 
he'd have gone back to the boat and sat with the other 11 losers. See, if you think too much, you're going to lose your miracle. Because the devil will get you to over-process it. What about this? What about that? Had you considered that? Had you considered this? And he'll trail you off. I need a miracle from God. Oh my God. What about your wife? She's nuts. What about your husband? He's he's out of his tree. What about what about your kids? They're de deranged. What about tomorrow? You got a presentation. Pretty soon, you know. What was I praying about? What? Wow. God happening to me. Peter started looking around. See? He started getting scared. Let me explain something to you quickly. Fear will cause you to see things that do not exist. Fear will cause you to see things you can't see. Peter started to see the wind. Are you freaking kidding me? You can't, trust me on this one, I'm not a scientist. You can't see wind. Now, if it's raining and wind blowing, now that's a horse. I got that one. You can't see wind, okay? Here's a shock for you. It's invisible. Keep it, keep it to yourself. Peter now has fear, and he sees the wind. Then he looks down here and sees what the wind's doing, and it is not pretty, okay? When he stepped out of the boat, the sea wasn't calm yet. I wanted that one to land. When he stepped out of the boat, the storm was still going on. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. You've been praying for years. You know, if this gets right and that gets right, you know, if I could just divorce, if I could just find a new, if I could just get this, if I could just switch this job, if I could just get another friend, if I... No. No, God's not going to answer your prayer. You're going nowhere. At some point in your life, you're going to have to take that step when things aren't perfect. That's right. 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 He steps out of the boat in the middle of a storm. He's doing fine. He's doing great. The other 11 apostles are going, oh my God. They're looking at each other. They're saying, I wish I would have gone. You ever notice that? When somebody else gets a blessing or does something right, or the other people go, man, I should have done that. Peter helped him out shortly thereafter. Now I know why I didn't do it. See, I told you. See, the church people will always second-guess you. And then if you do fail, they'll make sure you know it and remember it. Look at him. He's sinking now. There he goes. I told you. I, I knew he'd kill himself. His mother told me he would. Lord, save me. Guess what? Immediately it says. Are you getting this? Oh, God. Listen. You're in your comfort zone, your safe zone, whatever that is, in your Mickey Mouse life. It's time for you to un-Mickey Mouse yourself. And it's time for you sometimes to take a step when you don't have everything perfectly there and you can't think about every little detail you have to have. Jesus reaches out and grabs him, pulls him out of the drink. Now he's on the water again. His faith came back. Well, that's easy to have your faith come back when God himself is holding on to you. Man, that ain't no fight. That ain't no war. There's no great battles to overcome there. Great battles lead to great victory. Not when God does it for you. When you fight for your faith, that's when miracles happen. Shoo! He pulls him out of the drink. Puts him in the boat. And then asks him a question. God's asking you tonight. Stadzo, why did you doubt? And what is this Stadzo? It's analyzing two things. You're not sure 
which one of these would be better for the deliverance center? Uh, let me think about that for a minute. Mm. See, I'm doubting. Maybe this one might work. Bob, I think this is, are you sure? But this one's got the color that, well, wait a minute. Let me think about that again. See what I'm doing? Yep. I'm vacillating back and forth between two. Uh, Why'd you doubt? Listen. Once you decide to fight, you got to keep going. You can't stop midstream. It's as if you never started. It's like you never started. Let's close with this. Mark chapter 5. How's this going tonight? Am I, am I boring you? You're listening to this? I'm not, okay. All right, well, then let's finish up with this. In Mark chapter 5, let's go back and finish the story. We left the woman with cervix cancer. Now let's finish the story here. Brother Jarius is leading Jesus to his home. Okay? And he is doing great. Just like Peter. Fantastic. Somebody tells him that Jesus of Nazareth is in Jericho and there's a big parade for him downtown. His daughter's near death at home. His daughter was probably an only child, probably the youngest one. And he probably had six or seven sons. But if you got six or seven sons, your favorite one is the daughter. She's daddy's girl. Boys are running the mill when you got six or seven. Everybody back there had a large families because the larger family you had, the more wealth the family had, the more help and work and so on. And so this girl was like Isaac to Abraham. Not the boys. They're fine. She was the apple of his eye. She was daddy's girl. She got sick. The boys didn't. The dad is traumatized beyond belief. He bolts out of his house like Carl Lewis. He runs <laughs> down to the parade at Jericho, runs out in the street, and confronts God. God the Son. He explains it to him. Hey, my daughter's home dying. She may already be dead. Jesus, without even batting an eye, I mean nothing, just says, bang, take me to your house. Didn't even flinch. Why did he do that? He didn't pray the proper prayer. No, friend. The proper prayer is in your heart. And the Holy Ghost sees the heart. That's where he looks first. He knows what kind of prayer you're praying before you open your mouth. Brother Jerry has had the prayer. Trust me. Of total desperation. Then, on the way to the home, the devil says, Wow, I got to stop this thing. He goes, I'll kill the girl. And if that isn't bad enough, I'll send him some church people. <laughs> the church people run out of the house and run down to the street, and they do what? To do what they're going to do to you if you decide to fight for a miracle from God. They're going to come for you. And they're going to talk to you. You know what they're going to do? They're going to say something negative. They're going to say something that's a downer. Hello? I know what I'm doing right now because each person in this room, with the exception of a couple of kids, is rehearsing the last time it happened to them. You know exactly what I'm talking about. As soon as God blesses you here, somebody comes over here to beat you back down. You say, why is that always happening to me? Duh, it's a war, fool. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen to you? You think the devil's going to let you walk in and take anything from God that you want? 
I just walk in and get all my blessings. I, I watch Kenneth Copeland. <laughs> Have you literally lost your mind? You get something from God, and the spirits are going to see that and go, Whoa, we got to steal that back. That doesn't happen to me. I got word of faith and you speak over it. <laughs> word of faith. Bunch of crap. They come from the ruler synagogue. They tell him point blank. She's dead. Then they do exactly what the devil told them to. Don't trouble him anymore. Every time you're faced with adversity, the devil will always tell you to quit. They tell you to give up. Oh, yeah, the car will blow up on Monday Your daughter will blow up on Tuesday Your husband comes down with diarrhea on Wednesday and The Thursday the devil goes man. You got to get out of here You know what you should have married Bob when you were in high school <laughs> Suddenly Bob pops in your mind Bob oh Bob. Oh, you're so nice until he until he beat me <laughs> Why trouble him anymore? She's dead, fool. And he starts listening to them. He doesn't say anything because panic came over him. Sometimes fear is so powerful, it will leave you speechless. You'll get a clog here and a knot there. The demons of fear shut you down. They shut him down. He couldn't even speak. He lost her. Something happened after that. What was that? This guy had decided to fight. He left his house. He left his daughter dying. He went downtown to look for Jesus. This guy was, like Peter, doing great. Doing great. Should have been signing autographs. This was a great Christian, a disciple. She dies. He petrifies. Then the devil sends him some encouragers, which he always does. It's not unusual at all. It happens all the time. And guess what Jesus says to him? Let's break this down for a second. He says, what? Do not be afraid. Fear is Satan's numero uno Amen. weapon on Christians. And if the Christian allows fear to take over, they lose all their blessings and all their answers to prayer. Go over in a room in your house that has this noise. <laughs> Gone. Fear will rob you of everything you ever dreamed of having from God. It'll all be gone. So Jesus tries to circumvent it. He tells Brother Jarius, don't be afraid. Then he tells him something unbelievable. It says in the King James not Bible, be not afraid, only believe, but uh, Pistue was written in the present active tense. It should have been translated. On believing. You got the word from the negativeites. Uh huh. They live next to the Amorites. You heard from them. They gave it something like that. Like they always do. You heard that. Jesus said to him, Keep. On believing. What happened to you? You gave up. You're not going to give up anymore. They get to Brother Jarius's house. They walk in the door, and as soon as Jesus crosses the threshold, a miracle happens. The girl. Is healed and raised from the dead. Nobody knows it. No one knows. Why? Because everybody's out in the living room mourning. 
They're all wailing and crying. Oh my God. She's dead. She's gone. Listen, if you keep on believing, the Holy Ghost will bring you miracles you don't even know are there. He'll answer your prayers you don't even have any evidence of yet. You find out later he made his move. Amen. Happens all the time. He walks in the door and everybody's crying and yelling, wow, oh my God, it's all over. He says, hey, she's not dead, she's sleeping. She's alive. I just walked in the house. I didn't hear that. Come on. Yeah, you did. There was no prayer or great resurrection. He walked in the house. Why? Brother Jarius had a great trial and a great battle. And he saw a great victory because he kept on believing. Yes. Right? There wasn't a need to go through a ceremony or a prayer. When you keep on believing, Amen. the miracle just happens. Yes. She's not dead. She's sleeping. All the helpers at the church start laughing at God. That's when you have no faith at all. You don't believe God's word at all. All these miracles God has for you and you're laughing about them. What, what's God going to do with you? Shuffle you out the door. You didn't hear me. He put them all out. All of them out the door. The Holy Ghost has got patience to burn. But there is a point. There is a point where he stops. Because the Spirit of the Lord will not throw his pearls in front of swine. Jesus walked in and said, listen, I got great news. I just walked in here. Boom, that's it. She's sleeping. She's alive. He had to get rid of them. You don't throw the pearls of God, the miracles of God. You don't throw them in front of unbelieving scoffers. You don't do it. God won't do it. You start laughing at the things of God. You keep you got 50 chances and you you said screw all of them. All of a sudden the chances stop. All them people that were friends of Brother Jarius and that dead girl never got to see a miracle that day. They were ushered out the door. He took the father and the mother in and James and John. And the damsel, it says there in the King James Version. Pideon is a little girl, like a kindergartner or something like that. She was a little girl. You know, daddy's girl, so to speak. He went in there and he did what? He walked up to where she was laying. And then he, you know, pulled a Moses. Went through a gloriously spectacular prayer, shocking everyone. That's what happened. Not. Nah. He just lifted out his hands and lifted her up. Said, hey, can you give her dinner? You don't understand. You're not getting it. When you fight for your faith, the Holy Ghost will make his move. And from there on in, it's a coasting job. You coast in till the next battle. What is the next battle? To take you from that level of faith to that one. Is God a masochist? Does he like to see Christians just suffer all the time? He like kind of gets in the mood to beat on them. You know, hey, let's poke him this way. When he bends over, kicking, oh, it's hilarious. Boom, there he goes out the window. 
far from it. He would never hurt you. Not not one time. Not in a million years. Never one time. Every trial the devil dumps in your face and every crap bag of crap he throws at you is already seen by the Holy Spirit. And before he throws that dirty bag at you, your escape route has already been planned. Every trial, every sickness, every illness, every person, doesn't matter what it is, the escape route was sent before the devil attacked you. Who's this quote? Oh, yeah, I remember him. Some of your prayers are going to be answered easily and quickly, and we are grateful for those, Lord. I think they're great. I like hearing about them. I like it when it happens to me. I like it 100%. 360 like it. Love it. 360 love it. I like a prayer. I like a quick answer. So grateful. But those prayers are not going to get you to your discipleship. They're not going to happen. Those are maintenance prayers. Love them. Absolutely. Not knocking anything. Uh-uh. No way. Don't, don't send me an email. Love them. Grateful for them. Love it. But those prayers... Those quick ones, click, 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 click. Now, I'm talking to three or four, three or four, four or five. I'm talking to you right now. Them quick answers. No, no disciplehood for you. No discipleship. No. These. You're going to have to fight for your faith sometimes. Not all the time. Not all the time. No. No, I get it. Sometimes. Once in a while. You're going to have to fight. For your faith. And God allows it to happen. Because he has a master plan for you. To take you from this level of faith. To this one. And to that one. And to this one. And that one. And so I'm too old for that. No. That's a lie from the pits of hell. It doesn't matter what age you are. Father's got plans for you. Let's pray then. Lord, there's some saints here that uh, gave up because the devil was hard on them. I understand that. I'm with them. I'm just a regular person like everybody else. And I go through all the things everybody else goes through. I understand. But tonight, there's a few people here that don't want to be a Christian anymore. They're tired of only being partially healed. They're tired of being partially delivered. They got rid of demons last week, last month, last year. But they didn't get rid of all of them. They got partially healed. One thing got healed, the other thing didn't. Lord, they gave up because the devil brought in a fight. And I hate the devil, but I respect him. He knows how to fight. But when we step out in our faith, Lord, he knows how to run. And if we stand and oppose the devil, the Bible says, he will flee from us. But there's some people here tonight who have not continued to fight. And they have gotten tired with their families, their jobs, their careers, their ministry, whatever it is, their health. They got tired. And they gave up. They stalled. They stalled. And I know that you have not given up on them. You have not quit. And you will not quit. I know that. Absolutely convinced of it. Now, 
this Bible study tonight, Lord. I, I did my best on it, but my best is never good enough. You must use this Bible study and touch hearts and encourage them. That if they would have just fought a little harder and a little longer, their miracle was just around the corner. Had they just forgiven a little more, had they just stopped taking offenses a little sooner, the solution that you had sent them was right there. And even though that may be lost, you have another solution, a backup solution, a backup miracle. You've always got another miracle. And I pray right now, Lord, that the ones that want to be disciples, I'm praying for them tonight. I'm asking you to give them determination like Peter had when he first got out of the boat. I'm praying you'll give them that Syrian woman's fight. She wanted all the demons out of her daughter, not part of the demons. And tonight, several have gotten rid of part of the demons, but never got rid of them all. Well, that's going to change because they're going to fight because great victories come from great fights, great triumphs come from great challenges. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you're stalled, like I was praying, just raise your hand there. I want to pray for you. If you're stalled, you started out great like Peter, and then you sunk a little bit. There we go. Good one. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thanks, 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 thanks. Thanks. You stalled. You stalled. Yeah, the devil tricked you. You got you drifting off in some other area. He got you focused on something else. He brought in another trial. You switched over to that one and lost the other one. It happens to all of us, trust me. It happens to all of us. But victory doesn't happen to all of us. Unless you keep fighting. Yeah? I want you to stand up and come down here so I can pray for you tonight. If you raised your hand, just come right down here in front. Face me. Stand right along here. Ministry team's coming down for a second to help me. You stalled. Yeah? You stalled. Some of you never even started. You wanted an easy healing, an easy deliverance. And it didn't happen, so you said, you know what, I'll just go back to therapy and medication and group therapy. And you went back to something else. And that isn't working either. And you knew it wasn't going to work. And tonight you're going to repent of it. And the Spirit of God is going to come in here. He's going to heal and give you a reboot. A reboot. Right? Amen. You're gonna repent of it. You stalled. You knew you knew you should have finished it. You knew you should have kept on fighting. You stalled. Maybe it was discouragement. Maybe it was self-loathing. Maybe it was distractions. Whatever it was. Something got you off the track. Something got you. And now you're closer to disaster than you've ever been. Maybe it was blaming God. He thought he should have done it this way or that way. As soon as you blame God, the blessings stop right there. The demons have got legal rights to steal your prayers as soon as you get mad at God. It happens a lot, believe it or not. Christians regularly get mad at God because they have a preconceived idea of what they think he should do in their minds. And when he doesn't do it, a little bitty, a little bit of root of bitterness gets in there. And that's when it all starts to go bad. 
Close your eyes now. Let's pray. Father God, oh God. Oh, sweet Jesus. Lord Jesus, I saw that Syrian woman tonight. I saw Peter get out of that boat. Oh God. I saw. I saw what happened. I saw it. I saw them scriptures. I, I saw those stories. I read them before, but I never saw them quite like that when I read them before. Please forgive me for what I did. I stalled. I stalled out. I stalled out. Amen. Another long, big one. Big yawn again. Big yawn. Come out in the name of Jesus. I stalled again. And tonight, I'm going to fight. I'm not going to stand and do nothing anymore. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight because my life is worth it. You have a plan for me, Lord. And it's stalled out, but the plan is still there. The plan's still there. It's stalled, but the plan is still there, Lord. The plan is still there. I'm repenting right now. Dear Jesus, forgive me. Come on. Say it. Father, forgive me. Say it. You have to confess your sin for God to forgive you. You can't just say it in your mind. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Come on, just confess it. Here's why I stalled out, Lord. I was blaming you for something. Here's why I stalled out. I got discouraged and I went back to alcohol and pornography and meth. Come out. And meth and drugs. God have mercy on me. God have mercy upon my soul. Have mercy on me, Lord. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Come on, tonight you are blind Bartimaeus. Yes, you're blind Bartimaeus. You a fighter tonight. You a fighter tonight. Yes, you are. You fighter tonight. You're gonna fight tonight, aren't you? Come out of there, you rotten devil. There he comes. Come out right now. You fight her tonight. All these ugly men go tonight. Every one of them. Out of there. Come out of that body right now. All of them. They betrayed me. They lied to me. They took my money. All of them right now. Self-hatred. Drugs. Anger. Cursing and swearing. Come out in Jesus' name. There he is. Every bad man. Come on out. There it comes right there. It's coming out now. Come on out. Here they go. Get out of my body right now, I said. Go in Jesus' mighty name. There it is right there. That's the Holy Ghost right there. Come out now. I said, come out now. Now. Let me go now. I place a curse of failure on every demon from Asia. Go. Come out of my body right now. Get out of there, I said. Come out, you coward. You coward. Come out of that body right now. You coward. Right now, I said, get out of there. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. I said, come out of there. Big yawn. Keep yawning. Come on out. Satan, lose your hold of me. Satan, lose your hold of me. Out of my body right now. Satan, come out. Lust, masturbation, pornography, ugly women. Come out of that body right now. Come out of there, you pervert. Child sexual abuse. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of there, you pervert. Come out. Come out of there, you pervert. Now. Come out, lust. Chronic masturbation. Pornography. You pervert. You pervert. You pervert. Come out. Come out. Come out. Hold that. He's got lost demons. Just talk right to the demons. Yeah, talk to the demons, not him. Satan, you lust demon. Come out of that body right now. You lust demon. I come here. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Come on. Blind Barnabas. Fight. Blind Barnabas. Fight. Come out of there. Body right now. Satan, you let her go right now. Come out of body right now. There he is. He's coming up there. That's him right there. Come on out. There he comes. Come out, Satan. Satan. I need some more buckets. 
Satan, come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Get out of buddy. I need some more buckets. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body. You're not done. Come out right now. Every ugly man that ever touched you comes out tonight. There he comes. There he is right there. Thank you. Come out. Come out. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Come out. Right now. Come out of there. Witchcraft and sorcery. I bind your power. Witchcraft and sorcery. You get out. Witchcraft and sorcery. Out, I said. You're not done. Come out of that body right now. Come out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Come out of there right, right now. Come out of there, you witch. Now I said. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Food demon, come out of there. Food demon, come out. Using food as a comfort instead of the Holy Ghost. Come out right now. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on. Come out. I command your miserable wife to come out of you now. Exhaustion, come out. Wanting to die, come out. Go in Jesus' name. Witchcraft, come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there, you witch. I curse you. Come out in Jesus' name. Fail. Fail. You witch. Witchcraft, come out. Come out, generational witchcraft. Sorcery. Get out of that body right now. Rejection and low self esteem. Come out of there. Go. Rejection and low self esteem. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come out of there, you pervert. I love you. Come out, you pervert. Come out, lust. Come out of that body right Come out of the genitals right now. Come out. Get out of that body right Don't you stop. You're trying to fall in there. You're trying to hide right there. Come out right now. Come out of body right now. Hurry up and go. Hurry up and go. Come out of there. All the demons in your family, to grandma, grandpa. It was ugly. It was ugly. It was ugly. Satan, I bind your power. I command you, you generational curse, you spirit from the family tree. We bind your power. We curse you to failure. Come out of that boy right now. Come out of that boy right now. Come out of the smoke. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out of that boy right now. Get out of that body right now. Get out. Lost in pornography. Come out of there. Come out right now, you pervert. Get out of that boy. The mother commands you to come out now. Get out of his brain. Go. Go. Bad men. All of them. Come out right now. Adultery and fornication. Come out of her room right now. Come out of her vagina right there. Come on out. Let that boy go. Satan, we curse you and command you in Jesus' name. Let that boy go. The mother commands you to go. Satan, I command you to go right now. Let my son go. Let my son go. Hurry up. Every ugly man in your family tree, every demon, go. Get out of that body. Hurry up. Come out of that stomach. Get out. Demon of fear, come out. Come out of there, you witch. Witchcraft, come out. Witchcraft, come out. Witchcraft, come out of there. Come out, I said. Abusive men, go. Abusive men, come out. Abusive men, come out. Go, Satan. Satan, let's go. Get out of that body and come out quicker. Don't you dare stall with this woman of God. Come out of there, quick. Come out of her mind. Doubt and unbelief. Come out right now. Get out of there. Come out, you monster. Come out, you liar. Critical spirit. Lust. Lying spirits. Come out. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of there. Oh! There he goes. Get out! Come out of there. Get out of my body. Come out. Come on. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. 
Come out of that body right now. Loose your hold. Loose your hold. Demon of fear, come out. Demon of fear, come out. There he is. There he comes. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Demon of fear, come out. Fear. Go. Go. Leave her body right now. Go. 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 Go now. Go now. Go now. There you go. There you go. Fear. You get out of my lungs right this second. Come out of my lungs right now. Child of you, said, bind your power. Come out of me right now. Come on out. Get out of my lungs. Get out of my lungs, I said. Come out of there. Take a breath and blow. Spirit, I bind your power. Spirit, I command you to come out. Out. Come out of there, quickly. Come out of them lungs. Hurry up. Come out. <coughs> there he comes. Come out. Keep coughing. Come on out. Keep coughing. Come out. There he is right there. Keep coughing. Come out right now. There he comes. Come out of her lungs. I said come out of them lungs. Go now. Go now. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Get out of that body. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Get out. Quicker. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Get out of his brain. Right now. Go. Get out. Go, Satan. You get out of your lungs right now, I told you. Come on, buddy. Come out of my lungs. Take a big breath. Out you go. Come on out. All of them out. There he is. Here he comes. There he goes. She's not wearing this thing home. Come out of there. I said come out right now. Get out of her lungs. Come out of them lungs. Come out of them lungs. Get out, I said. I command all the ugly men used your body and betrayed you. All of them. Every sexual pervert. Every abuser. Everybody that criticized you. All of them. Every family member that turned on you. Get out of her lungs now. Come on out. Come out. Every family member go. We're forgiving all of them right now. And they almost come out. Go. Come out. Now their demons must come out. All of them. Go. Come out of her spine. There he is. Come out of her. Come out. Did you used to smoke? All right, go ahead and repent. Father God, I ask you to forgive me for killing myself. It was slow suicide, and I'm repenting of it. It was a horrible sin. I should never have done it. I should have never started smoking. I should have never smoked. It was a horrible sin. I repent of it. And I command this demon of smoking in my lungs, come out. Come on out. Come on out. Get out of there. Come out of that body. Thank you, Jesus. All right, he just forgave you. Take a breath of love. Good, there you go. Come out, spirit. Come on out of her lungs. There he comes. There he is right there. Come on out. Come on out. Out. Come on out. Come on out. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out of there. Right now. Lungs clear. Lungs clear. Joints clear. Joints clear. Every spirit of infirmity, come out now. Come on out. Come on out. Spirit of infirmity, come out of there. Get out! Come out of there. Spirit of infirmity and she used to smoke. Come on out of there. I just want to give a hug. I love you. I cried when I saw you. I 
Thank you for coming. You get out of this body right now. This is a man of God, not self hate. No oh, loser and a pervert. That's a lie. Spirit of rejection from childhood. Come on out. There he is. Spirit of rejection. Come on out. Come on out quickly. Come out quickly. Get out of this boy right now. I curse you right now in Jesus' mighty name. I curse you and command you to fail. Leave his brain. Leave right now. Go. Close your eyes. Are you his mother? And the other one? Father God, I want you to go back in time right now. I want you to go back in time. When this curse was put on her family. And the, before the devil started sending her bad men. <laughs> betrayers <laughs> and before he started to give her burdens for, from her children burdens exhausting carrying burdens for her children the Bible says we are to cast all our care upon him for he cares for us and so tonight mother is going to release her children right now into your hands mother is going to let them go she cannot heal them and she cannot fix them you can Lord we're going to trust you to do it we're going to release the kids into your loving hands right now and lift this burden off her soul lift off lift off I release, I release this toughness I had to be tough and I had to be strong to make it, just to make it I'm going to let it go right now you're tough for me Lord you're strong for me Lord I'm going to release these children into your hands and all this exhaustion and all this work and all this pain I'm going to let it go 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 now I'm going to let it go I'm going to let it go right now I'm going to let it go say it now go ahead I repent of carrying burdens and I release them Lord to you I repent of carrying burdens do you speak in tongues you do is that your mom is that your cousin what's your name oh. just pray after me okay not yet, not yet. Notice how easily you repeated that? It was perfect. I've got a uh, secret to reveal to you. You already have your gift of tongues, you just haven't released it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I love you. I love you, and I'm releasing it right now. Any syllable, speak it out. Atta girl, honey, you got a nice anointing on you. Go ahead. Now add some syllables on your own. Go. Help her. How are you doing? What's going on here? Um, I've been starting self-deliverance, and we have an appointment on the 23rd. Now what's, what's blocking it? Um, spirit of rejection was the first one, and prenatal. And then when did that happen? Hi, Mary. Prenatal. When did that happen? Prenatal. Oh, prenatal. And then what happened after that? Oh, a lot of a lack of love. Um, At what age? Oh, three, four. By, by. My parents. Okay. And my sister. Both of them. Yes. Mother well, or dad? especially mother. Mother. Especially All mother, right. and her mother was. Um, 
in charge of the Eastern Star for, oh, boy. for okay, San Francisco. Now, her, did your mother, uh, was she a huggy, kissy type, or was she more kind of standoff? Oh, no, hands off. Hands off. And was she a nitpicker? No. Okay. No, no. Did Very she have a temper? No. Just, just, was she hands absent? Off, doesn't know what, like, clues. What's her name? Uh, Dorothy. Dorothy, okay. Now, this is going to be kind of hard. Just take I'll a big whatever. breath. And just try to relax. Okay? Just try to relax. Okay? Take a big breath. Heal. Come on. Heal. There it comes. There it comes. Coming out right now. Out. Out right now. Come out, you rotten devil. And a girl speaking in tongues. She's speaking in tongues. She's speaking. Listen to her. What the machine she did. At a girl, keep going. I gotta show you something else. Don't leave. No, I told you to come out of that body right now. You're stalling. That's what you're doing. You're stalling. I command demons from adultery to come out of there right now. I command all these dirty men, all of them, in there. Come out right now. Get out of the body right now. There it is. I command grief and sorrow to come out. There it comes. Go. Keep going. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Hold that. Come out right now. Hurry up. <laughs> hey, now, uh, see, I don't want you looking at her. Come on over here. Now, just stare at that wall there. Now, try and relax, would you? Just, yeah, I had a girl. Beautiful. Take a big relax. What was your mom's name? Dorothy. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, you don't stop. You keep going. Come out of there right now. Come on out. I said, come on out. Come on out right now. You don't stop. Keep going. There it comes. Lord, I want you to go back in time right now. I know that Dorothy was very hurt when she was young. And I know a spirit of rejection got into her body. And she had nobody to help her. And she never recovered. And she transferred all these demons into her body. They're all in there. Rejection, fear, all of it. But tonight, we have to relieve Dorothy from her soul. Dorothy has to go. Just take a big breath. Breathe. Breathe. Relax. Father, I ask you right now, reach down inside their soul here. Lift Dorothy out of there. She doesn't need a mother anymore. She has a heavenly father. Breathe. Breathe. Thank you, Jesus. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Big breath. I release my mother and I give her to the Lord. I give her to the Lord. I'm releasing her right now. You get out of that body right this second. This woman of God is to be completely set free. You're not going to trash her anymore. Come out of that body. Food demon, come out of there. Food. I release you my mother, I forgive her, and I just let her go, just like this, in Jesus' name, go, mama, go now, leave my body, go, I want your rejection spirit out, keep breathing, breathe in and relax, breathe, Come out of there. Come out of that body right now. Get out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out of that body. Come out of that body right now. Dorothy, sweetheart, I love you, but you have to leave for the rest of my life. Father is taking me from this point in. Go now. I let my dad go. I let my dad go. He let me down. Come out, everybody. Come out. I let my dad go. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out quicker. You're too slow. Come on, everybody, right now. I want you out of that stump. 
Go. I'm so sorry, Lord. Go. Go. I want my parents released to the Lord and gone. I don't need parents anymore. I've got my Heavenly Father. He's all I need. I forgive them both and I just let them go. Come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Breathe. Yeah. Just pray in your mind. Spirit of rejection from mother and dad, I release you now. Breathe. Go. You get out of that body right now and stop slowing down. I know what you're doing. You're trying to make her think sure she stops. Stop it right now. Stop that. Stop it. Come on, body. Come out right now. Get out of my body right now. Come on, you fight, sweetheart. Come on, you start fighting. You got to fight to get healed. You have to fight for a miracle to get one. Breathe. 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 Go. There I go. Breathe. I release my parents. That's my first job. My first step to being delivered is to let my parents go. Tonight, I'm going to cross step one. Mother and dad, I loved you. It wasn't you. The demons took you. They used you to hurt me, and I forgive you, and I now release you. I now release you. Out. Out. There you go. Breathe. Come on out. What else is there? What else is there? Now, you use food as a comfort. Just repent of it. Food demon out. There he is. That's him right there. Come on out. Food demon, come on out there. Come out. Come out there, you food demon. Come out. Come out of there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want you to perform the miracle of this child, whatever it takes, no matter what. Drive these demons out of me, no matter what he has to do. No matter what. Go. Get out. 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 Hmm? Got a lot out. Yeah, now you just talk right to the demons after you get them going. Yep. Before that, you ask them what's wrong with them. Why are they up here? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Then they then they lie to you. They say, well, it's my shoulder. It's, it's not their shoulder. Right. Okay, so then there's usually something in childhood. Usually. Or a first marriage. Those are your two thresholds. Somebody heard him usually bad in childhood or first marriage got him. Mm. And so if they have certain types of illnesses, you know it's that. Right? For example, joint problems, arthritis, bowel problems, gut problems, irritable bowel, anything like that. Mm. It's always related to something that happened to them. Yes, that guy. There's something like. Right here, like no. this might be Where, right there? Yeah. Oh, okay, now, is it in the eye or like above the eye? the eye. Something in the back. Now, was, um, yeah. was you uh, uh, fondled when you was a kid? No. Or um, when did you start uh, adultery, sleeping with gals? Adultery. It, what yes, age? Sure. Uh, what age? Like, you mean like first girl? First girl you slept with. 16, okay. Did you ever date or sleep with a girl that had a spiritual background? Priest, it, it's been probably like like two and a half months ago. What was her name? Jocelyn. 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 Huh? Yeah. And then, but this thing though, it was uh, Lisa. That's what you were saying, Lisa. Was Lisa Jocelyn. after Jocelyn? They're kind of around the same time. Did did, did either of them put a curse on you? They because you broke up with them or they got mad at you? Did they get mad at you? I so I have a friend who's a prophet. He said like literally I have witchcraft. He was like, Man, like I've been praying against people it's like over you though, there's like a lot of From them? Yeah, from women. Yeah. Okay. Now listen, uh that's a tough demon to get out. Yeah. Okay. So we can fix it. Just uh close your eyes and take a big breath here. Father God, uh, you see this guy standing here? He's very intelligent. 
and he's a good looking guy and women are naturally attracted to him and that's like a curse and he uh, commits adultery and enjoys it and he knows it's wrong but he does it anyway I stop. I stop. and then he repented I, he quit I, something how the enemy attacked me yeah, it's that, one of my weaknesses. No, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, he, then he quit. Okay? But it was too late. Yeah. A spirit already got in. Right. And so, Lord, I need you to give him the gift right now of godly sorrow. I want you to give him back his tears because of the pain he caused you because of the pain that he caused you when he hurt you you had all these big plans for him spiritually and all these preaching plans for him and the healing anointing and all that stuff you had for him but he but he uh, treated it like garbage and decided to sleep with women instead and he needs godly sorrow and I'm asking you to give him back his tears Okay, sorry. Tears come back. Tears come back. Ah. What's going on here? This one's got some left. You know him? My brother, and I actually oh. adopted him as my son. What? I adopted him as my son, but by relation, he's my brother. He's your blood brother? Yeah. Oh, okay. What's your name? William. Oh, William. Now, uh, when you was little, did somebody fondle you? Uh, yeah, my mother. When your mom did? did you, were you here last week? Huh? Did somebody fondle you? Mom. Was, uh, how old were you? I was six and she made me perform on her. Six? And then did she have you do oral sex on her? What did she do to you? Um, she put her hands in my pants and was... At what age? Seven, eight. And how old? Are, how much older? I'm 31. He's 18. Were you were gone when it happened to him? Yeah, I was brought uh, in by my grandmother, and then he was still with my mom. We we're going through CPS during that hard time. With CPS okay. Issues. Well, what's her name? Lila. Lila. Okay. Now, who molested her when she was young? My grandmother thinks her husband. Did. So Lila's dad. But oh, her own dad. That's her the blood rumor. dad. I, she doesn't admit to it, and she says my grandmother's crazy. Did somebody else get to her? I know that my grand, her mom's brother tried to. Okay. But she didn't admit to anything happening. You in school? What grade? College. College. Freshman. Freshman. Okay. Do you know what you're gonna do with your life? Um, career-wise, yes. What? Um, become a loan officer. That's the. A what? Uh, become a loan officer. Oh, loan officer. Okay. That's the plan. Are you a business now. major or something like that? Yeah. Business finance. Okay, now listen. Uh, you guys got uh, a bad problem here. Okay. Before, up here, before your mother was around, there was some horrible spirits up there. Perverts. Rotten perverts up there, bad ones. We've had okay. huge witchcraft issues on my grandmother's side as well, like Mexico witchcraft. Your mom's side, her mother. Okay, she was Hispanic. Okay. Like she had like doctor, grandfather, shaman kind of thing. Oh boy, now that's Slaughter that's made it even worse. Okay, so what I need you to do here. Why are you down here? Um, what do you want God to do for you? Give me a new heart. New heart? Because? It's been hardened after years of denying Him and always being at church and always being at church in my life. And then. What church like, were you at? Uh, right now, outreach, it's a small no, church. when he was younger. Oh, when he was younger, my All mom took him around. It's different, like Jehovah's Witness. All kinds of churches. Him. Okay. My mom like no. walked into any church. She's an addict. Okay. Okay. Hey, listen. Uh, we can fix this thing. 
but it's going to cost you everything here. Okay? But you got to start at step one. You got to start at step one. Okay? So it's always an apology. So you raise your hand there and stay right there. Hey, how'd that go? Keep coming out. Did you sense anything? Did you feel anything any better or worse? Did anything manifest? Okay, you're coming in this week? Uh, the 23rd. 23rd. Okay, see you then. We'll go over there. Hey, all right. Uh, the first thing is an apology. Okay? And so when you apologize, when you have a hard heart, you don't feel anything. You don't feel it. That's okay. To God. Because he knows that you're blocked, and he knows that you were hurt as a child, and he knows what you've been through. Okay? So, you apologize by faith. And he hears it. And then the Spirit of the Lord starts coming in. He kind of inches his way in. Okay? Here, I'll show you how to do it. Lord Jesus, I am so sorry for what I've done, for getting a hard heart, for walking away from you when you had a call on my life. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. Help me. Please forgive me, Lord. Help me. Please forgive me, Lord. Help me. I need you. I need help. Please help me. Please help me, Lord. Please help me, Jesus. He's also got a condition where his chest is sunken in. He's got no, a sunken so in chest. That's a that's secondary. That's not the main thing. Now listen. We spoke on Thursday, by the way. We spoke on Thursday, by the way. Uh, how'd it go? Mm -hmm. Our conversation? I fill out the papers you asked me to fill out mm -hmm. if I want to start serving here. Yeah. Now, are you using food as a comfort? In what? You use food as a comfort. Okay. Now, what year did that start? I got a medication to stop it. What year did that start? Um, maybe about 10, 9 or 10. Okay. Before that, what happened? Was uh, that when uh, that happened? No. Before? That started happening when my grandmother started telling me I could change my mom if I told her I loved her and she should change. Should what age was that? That was around 9, 10. 9. Your grandmother but, told you that? Yeah, but I couldn't oh. even want to change my mother because she's all messed up. Okay, good, good. Now, close your eyes there. And just try to relax. Just totally relax, okay? Take a big breath. Big breath. Totally relax. What's your mom's name? Lila. Okay, ready? Breathe. What's grandma's name? Margie. Margarita. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Lord, you see this beautiful woman standing here? She's got bad soul wounds. And it wasn't her fault. When she was young, Grandma lied to her. Her mother perverted her. And the devil just stabbed her right there, right in the soul. She never recovered, and it must come out tonight. Come out of there. Grandma, I break your spell over your granddaughter. I break your spell. I command you, you lust spirit, come out of her lips. Mother, come out of her vagina. Go. Get out of there. Come out. There it is. Come on out. Come out. Mother. Mother, there, here she comes. Come on out. Come out. Shame. Shame and misery. Come out of that body. Come on out. 
Shame and misery, I command you to come out. There it is. Shame from mother. Misery from mother. Go. Right now. Grandma, come out. You food demon, I bind your power. Come out of her right now. Get out of her mouth and her throat. Come out of her breasts. There it is. Shame and grief. Go. Come on out. Come out of there. Go. Go. I do, and we were sleeping. Go. Together, but, um, that yeah, so was you're actively sleeping? No, no, not no more. That was like um, two months ago. Now, hold on a second. How'd that go with your thing? Was, were you able to say it? Was I able to say it? Yeah. Yeah. Were you comfortable saying it? Yeah. And did you ask for forgiveness? Yeah. Okay. Did you mean it? Huh? Yes. He forgave you. It's over. He just, he, he's right here. The Holy Ghost right here. He heard you and forgave you. Yeah. And so what's the next phase? Phase two. Let's go there right now. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I give you praise and I thank you and I worship you. Keep him going. You get out of that body right this second. Shame and embarrassment. Embarrassment, I command you in Jesus' name. Shame and humiliation of that body right this second. Go! Shame and humiliation and embarrassment, I bind your power. I want you out, I said. Out! There it is. Keep coughing. Come on out. There it comes. Keep coughing. Go, Satan. Get out of there. Right there it is. They're coming out now. Food demon, come on. Food demon. Shame and embarrassment, humiliation, oral sex. Go! There it is. Here it comes. Oral sex. Come on out. Oral sex. Come out of body right now, I said. What are you doing in there? Go! Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come out, I said. Get out of my body right now, you pervert. Go. Come out. Food demon. There it goes. Glory. Come on, get out of that body quicker. Come on now, faster, come on. Come on, faster, I said. Out! Faster, you rotten devil. Faster! Faster, I said, go. Come out of there, you. Come on, you pervert. I want every ugly man out of this body right now. I said all of them. All of them. Oral sex, come out. Out. Oral sex, come out. Come out of her mouth. Spirit, come out right now. Come out. There it comes. Go. Here it comes. Oral sex, come out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing my chest and this dip in my chest. Thank you, Lord. Heal. Chest, come out. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing my chest. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You two birds. YouTubers, go to the website right now, hardcorechristianity.com, and hit, hit the teaching button. Hit the teaching button. Go down to how Satan controls the mind, and go down to Satan's counterattack. The devil will counterattack after tonight. He will attack you tonight. He will try to rob you of what you got tonight. He'll make a move on you tonight. Satan's counterattack. Go ahead. If you did not get all the demons out, if you did not get all the demons out, you have got to get the rest of them out. No matter what. No matter what. You cannot get part of the demons out and skate the rest of the way in. The devil's not going to go for it. He not gonna. He, uh, he don't play that. A homie don't play that. He's gonna come after you and try and get the ones that came out tonight. He's gonna try and let them back in. He's gonna try and let them back in. You cannot do that. You must finish it. Hey, what's going on with this guy? How you doing? Good, brother. How you doing? You printed him once before. I sent you an email. And he's the one that they were going to cut off his foot from diabetes. Yeah. And I brought yeah. him a few times when he went here. We prayed for him. So he's got diabetes. He's got a fat foot. It is healing. What's his name? 
Nacho, Ignacio. Oh, does he speak English? He understands a little bit of English. Oh, okay. Can you understand me? All right. Listen, diabetes is caused by soul wounds. El diabetes es causado por, por, uh, por problema del alma. And, and, and he, I don't know if you recall when I brought him back at the other place, Mike. Uh, he had an issue that when he confessed when he was a teenager, he had bestiality issue. Yeah. And he, he lived on the streets. He's got no love for nobody. So he has maybe self hate. Mm -hmm. uh, and he hasn't cried in years. He hasn't broken in years. Okay. Now listen, the diabetes is because of you hating yourself. El diabetes dice que viene por causa de que tú no te amas a ti mismo, Nacho. Eso lo habíamos hablado antes. And God has forgiven you for all that stuff you did. Pero Dios, por todo lo malo que tú hiciste, Nacho, en un pasado, Dios ya te perdonó. Tú lo sabes. And if you will receive his forgiveness, y si tú recibes su perdón, and thank him for it, y le das gracias, you can get healed. Puedes ser sano. He's got a bad chest, okay? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with his chest? He had oh, open surgery a while back. No, oh, it's okay. Raise your hand. <laughs> Raise your hand. No, no te va a pegar. No te va a pegar. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him. Lead, lead, lead him. Glory to God. Glory to Dios. Thank you, Jesus. Gracias, Padre. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for forgiving me. Come on. Say it. Con ganas. Con ganas, Nacho. Come on. Louder. Con ganas. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Pelealo, pelealo. Fight it. You gotta fight it. Thank you for forgiving me. I forgive myself. Yo me perdono. I repent of hating myself. Me arrepiento de odiar. I forgive myself. Y me perdono. Thank you for forgiving me, Lord. I give you praise. Gracias, Padre Santo. I give you glory. Come on now, keep praising. Praise your way out of it. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I'm asking you to heal this foot. Heal. Heal. Thank you, Jesus. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for loving me. Hallelujah. Streamers, I love you. See you next time.